At Integrative Nutrition, our mission is to play a crucial role in improving health and happiness. And through that process, create a ripple effect that transforms the world. There's no question that health coaching is the future of healthcare. When I started uh, many, many years ago, there was no such thing as health coaching. You'd go into the doctor, the doctor was the wise one, they would ask you these questions, there was no questioning the doctor, and basically that's how life was. Fast forward to today, the healthcare is uh, astronomically expensive. People can't afford it, government can't afford it, corporations can't afford it. It's literally trillions and trillions of dollars every single year for healthcare, while at the same time, people are sicker and unhealthier than ever, and like basically addicted to drugs. Could, you know, it's prescription drugs, but it's addicted to drugs. I'm sure you know your parents, people around you. Of course, none of us take any medication. <laughs> Just kidding. But, you know, we're in a society where we are, uh, drug pushers are everywhere, trying to get us on the most recent prescription. And the cause and the origination of the problem isn't really addressed. The answer is the blue pill or the purple pill. The answer is never, well, what are you eating? Or, you know, what can you do to make your life better? So, in the United States alone, there are literally hundreds of millions of people who could benefit from having a health coach. Because no matter how educated or not educated a person is, almost nobody in the United States or in most countries has had much education about how to eat and how to live a healthy, happy life. And if that was done, even once during the course of their life, the expenses to the healthcare system would drop dramatically because there would be a greater amount of self-care. And when symptoms would arise, they would notice the symptoms arising and do something about it as opposed to just keep going and going and going until the entire machine falls apart. So the paradox we deal with at Integrative Nutrition is that on the one hand, we have hundreds of millions of people in need of a health coach. And on the other hand, we have our students and graduates saying, well, how do I find a client? And I'm always like, well, there's clients everywhere. You just walk down the neighborhood, wherever you are, and you'll see a lot of people who you're like, whoa. Do you ever do that? You'll see people, you're like, whoa. And so, you know, whether they can afford a health coach or even people who can't afford a health coach can work in free programs that you offer or group coaching programs. Our goal is to make health accessible to everyone at the level that is comfortable and economical for that individual. Through the work we did, we did a pilot project for the president of the borough of Manhattan where we took 100 graduates and they did health coaching in East Harlem for 100 women. And just to show that everyone wants to be healthy. And we showed, we showed women how to use food stamps to eat healthy food as opposed to you know, Coke and chips and things like that. Everyone wants to be, it's you know, just like a plant, I say this often, but just like a plant will like lean towards the light. Well, guess what? Human beings also like lean towards the light. It's part of how DNA works. And so we understand when we see water that we want to drink. Or when we see healthy food, if we weren't influenced by billions of dollars of advertising, we can tell just like Every animal can tell that food is good for me or that food is like, no, I don't care how hungry I am, I'm not eating that food. 
or we've been so swayed by what to eat, by corporate uh, agenda and budget. So in starting the school, what was really important to me was to be able to not only teach and have the best school for nutrition with the best teachers teaching a range of dietary ways of eating, but to also include vocational training, state-of-the-art website, and lifelong learning so that our students can not only understand how to eat well and share that with others, but also how to build a business, how to be successful, and really how to create a ripple effect so that the world is a healthy place. You know, we're dealing now with not only the food and diet crisis, but the environmental crisis. And, you know, we as a species really need to get it together. And so the ripple effect is everything starts with food. The food we eat, long after the tastes are gone, is inside our belly, being digested and becoming part of our blood, and through that becoming part of our cells, our tissues, our organs, our skin, our hair, our thoughts, and our feelings. And when nourished well, all species, including human beings, behave well. And when nourished poorly, all species, including human beings, do crazy things. And our species is doing crazy things right now on our planet, in our world, in relationships, in business, all over the place. And I was fortunate to uh, be intrigued by world-class teachers who I met in my 20s, which was a very long time ago, who would tell me food changes everything. And unless humans start eating differently, there will be global crisis, there will be climate crisis, there will be economic crisis. And that's what we see actually the beginnings of rolling out now. And we want to take responsibility not only to compost and recycle, those are like important, but more, you know, people say, oh, we need climate change. Well, what we really need is like human change. It's like, wake up people, the government isn't going to save you, right? How many of you know the government isn't going to save us? <laughs> okay, so then what's left? The corporations are going to save us? How many of you think the corporations are going to save us? I don't think so. It's, it's just people like me and people like you who think this through and say, okay, we're, we're in trouble here. You know, we need to do something because there's a lot of these systems that are, uh, it's like, what's up with that? Like every year, <laughs> these systems keep getting uh, more messed up. Things today that don't shock us 20 years ago would shock us. You know what I mean? Now it's like, oh yeah, that's... So, in my 20s, I was influenced to understand all of this through people who uh, basically survived Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they were like, oh, whoa, you know, we need to do something so that never happens again. And uh, so mostly my life has been a fascination and kind of a love affair with how uh, an individual person can make an enormous difference in the world. But it's important to understand and really hear what I'm saying right now. I'm no different than you are. You know, when I was where you are, I had not one iota more skill than you have. The, o the only differentiating factor, really, from my perspective was that I had single pointed focus. You know, I, I once heard this guy, Buckminster Fuller, uh, talk about what one person can do. And uh, then John Denver wrote a song about it. And because I was you know, young and open, I was like, wow, one person, if they really put their mind to it for good or for evil, can do a lot. And um, 
So I just took it upon myself to create a little intrigue and drama and excitement and passion and uh, really be myself and do what was a natural expression of who I am. And uh, so I try to convey that to our graduates and say, I know you're passionate about food and diet and getting healthier. Now here's what I want you to do is I want you to turn the corner from being a consumer, being like me, 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 I'm going to have a better green juice or a better recipe for myself or more organic and just think about the whole rest of the world <laughs> that's falling apart and turn the corner from only or primarily caring for yourself and know that you as an individual, like me as an individual, can make an enormous difference in the world by applying yourself. And, and there's budget for it. People, you don't have to be, you know, poor in doing this. You don't have to volunteer to do this. Healthcare is a, something that people pay for. People pay a lot of money for. Corporations pay a lot of money for. Government pays a lot of money for. And you want to, each person, find how you can fit into that massive budget to be able to deliver a valuable service in terms of prevention and, edu and education. The thing that most people want to understand is that our body is like an amazing biocomputer. It, it can maintain 98.6 by itself. So for example, if all the heat went off right now, we would start to self-heat inside our body. Or if the air conditioning was freezing, we would start to maintain what's called homeostasis. Just that one thing that our body does is really amazing. But in addition to all of that, if the lights went out, our eyes would open further, and the body can give birth to new life. A baby is born from a little egg into a full human being. So there's no question that the body is a biocomputer more brilliant than any computer that we have going on. So we don't really need to push it to make it work. We need to let it do its own thing by itself. You know, when I was a child, my father would say to me when I was sick, he's like, well, you can either wait seven days and you'll probably feel better, or you can take these medications and you'll be good in a week. <laughs> and at eight years old, I was like, what? And, but it stuck with me. And so a lot of the current, what should I do for this? What should I do for this? Comes from the fact that people overexert their body. They are overly demanding of their body, give me more energy, right? I wanna do this, I wanna do this. And there's no downtime. And so we push it too far and then the machine breaks. So, what we really need to do is not take like more supplements or more medication to fix the machine. We just need to give it a rest. Let it slow down and pace ourselves and uh, not exceed the speed limit. Like if the speed limit is five days a week of work, two days a week of rest, it seems like that's what people have figured out over all time. Then exceeding the speed limit is, well, I'm going to work eight days a week, right? It's a song because people, ahead of its time, because people just keep going and then they wonder why they're not feeling well. And so the different ways of not feeling well have an uh, encyclopedia of names to it. You know, there's arth arthritis and PMS and cancer, but it's all one thing. It's all one thing, which is that we took this body that was a perfect, brilliant biocomputer that can heal itself by itself, and we demanded it. We were a slave driver to it. Give me more, give me more, give me more. You can do that for a day or a week or a month or a year. But then for decades at a time, eventually the machine is going to break. But instead of having names for the different ways that it breaks, Health coaches can say, 
the machine broke. Your machine is broken. So let's just repair the machine rather than, well, let's deal with arthritis or let's deal with PMS. If you go that route and you fix the arthritis or the PMS, but you don't fix the eight days a week and you don't fix that they're eating foods that are unfit for human consumption and you don't address, well, how's your primary food? Like, what's going on in that area of your life? Then the remedies that you give the body is like a Band-Aid, even less than a Band-Aid, because now they think they're well and more duration of time will go on where they keep treating themselves poorly without loving themselves and the problem will resurface in a worse way in the future. You want to be uh, meditative. So as the person is speaking, you, you don't want to be the person who is dominating the conversation by speaking 80% of the time. Because the human being will heal itself by itself. We spoke about that. And so by allowing the client to speak, they will figure out what needs to happen for themselves. You may need to ask some high mileage questions and drill down deeper into what's going on. But as you create eye contact with them and they detect that you're really listening, the brain starts to calibrate that it's OK and safe to open up and then all kinds of things come up, which is very different than when people are teaching you how to do coaching. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, and, and, or whatever is the version. How many of you notice that even before you came to the school, you could often be super helpful to people who you cared about by coaching them in their life? You know, you, you listen, you care, and human beings have a bundled software in our DNA to know how to help move people along to the next level. So I think it's, in a way, arrogant to think that we have to teach people how to do that when we ourselves can acknowledge that we were doing that for years before, and we were pretty good at it. A lot of our students were health coaches but not being paid for it prior to coming to the school. Any of you were doing that before you came to the school? So the, what the school provides is a structure to be able to more carefully walk people through the process, to be able to commit by paying for the support. But the coaching skills are best learned through practice. You can't learn tennis by reading a book. Once you start playing tennis, you can read about tips about how to play tennis. But the key way to learn tennis or health coaching is to get on the court and practice. So in the school, you practice with other students. And then while you're in the school, we encourage you to find clients to practice while you're in the school so we can coach you and be there for you when you have questions and we can support you with any questions that come up. And you want to be able to get to the 10 people in a six month program. The first person, you're like, oh my God, what am I doing? And maybe you feel like a fraud because you haven't gone to medical school. Uh, but that's okay, there's lots of doctors out there. You're not a doctor, you're a health coach. Key is to get to the 10th client in a six month program. And then it's like playing tennis. You just, wow, OK, I get it. You know, there's the net. You hit the ball over, and you're not a professional yet. But you play 10 more rounds or 20 more rounds, and you get better at it. And you can read about it and study more and get tips. But we're basically bundled with this skill from birth. Sugar. Is it really the devil, or is it part of a normal diet? Sugar is becoming one of the nutrition world's biggest villains, even more so than fat. It's in everything.